I don't think we actually figured out this order. Renee Allen, do you have? Okay, let's do that. Alex. There's a reason for that. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Mike, so uh, I'm, there you go. Okay, I don't want to make excuses about this. This is a story I'm working on. I don't really want to tell you too much about it because it would take more time than just reading the story. But let's hope you can follow it. I think all you really need to know is um, an earthquake just happened and the, there's sort of two voices. The narrator is a translator <coughs> of old documents who has just found a very significant old document. Um, and the voice that this story starts with right now, or this excerpt starts with, is what's in the document she's translating. Okay. Here follows the account of the accused Virama Vovongano in his first interview at the office of the second mate. Says Orano, state your name accused. Says Virama, you first, Orano. I am not so required, but I am Orano Totoko, second mate of Eolan, Verano. And what am I, an upright citizen, accused of, if I may ask? Orano, you have that right. You are accused of impersonating a wise speaker. Verama, nonsense. Orama, your name accused. Verama, who made this accusation? Navina the wine seller who brings baseless grievances against me by the score? Orano. If I am required to request your name a third time, hindering the law will be appended to the crime of which you have been accused. Virama. Well, I have nothing to hide. My name is Virama Vovongano, an honest merchant. Orano. The records state there was little of honesty in the work of your father, Vongono, Vongono Harea. Virama here says something unintelligible. Orano. What did you say? Virama. I said, I have distanced myself from the dishonest work of my father, and I ply an honest trade. Orano. What trade is that, Verama? Verama. I sell good luck charms. Orano. Does the sale of good luck charms require you to wear a wise speaker's robes? Verama. In no way. Orano. And yet, you are arrested wearing same. Verama. Is that so? I bought them at a fripper's to enhance my mystique. Orano. I sincerely doubt any fripper would sell such robes to common street filth. Verama here says something unintelligible and becomes uncooperative. Here ends the first interview. <laughs> if I missed mention of the prophet's name in the previous fragment, here I had more than I wanted. He did not sound at all like a polished seer of the Moro book, scribing predictions in formal rhetoric. He sounded like a scoundrel, a rascal. Rashly, I wanted this to, this to be the prophet the speakers were so all fights fired serious about. A common charm seller whose father had been a criminal. It was diverting, if terrifying, to imagine that the almighty Alkirk was built on the words of a liar. It would render the Morrow book a collection of colorful fictions, and the Yester book, matching each of the Morrow book's prophecies to a historical event, a complete waste of time. But if scholarship had taught me anything, it was that the more likely case was that I had found an obscure record of some lowlife who happened to share the name of the prophet. Could the sainted Vongano also be a criminal, and not some lord of Kalindarum or some forgotten sorcerer? To be fair, nowhere is anything official recorded about Vongano, including a surname, but the suspicions sang in, sank into me that I was translating a drab legal record of a no-name island, that the only value in the tablet was its extreme age. The pattern of rain had stopped, and the sky had turned a spoiled green, the color of chewed Kelpec, to match my mood. The quake seemed to have damaged the day, leaving an odd dead stink in its wake. Despite it being mid-afternoon, I had to flick an illumin awake to light my work. Here follows the confession of the accused Virama Vovongano, received in the presence of Constable Orano Totokot and several witnesses. Says Orano, state your name, accused, says Virama. Varama Volvongano. Orano, you have prepared a statement? Here Varama indicates agreement. Orano, if you agree, I will lead this, read this aloud for the record. Here Varama indicates agreement. Orano, 
I, Varama Vavongano, declare that I wore the robes of a wise speaker during the Sword Tide Festival, intending to mislead customers into believing I was in fact a wise speaker, to induce them to pay for divinatory services that I should and could in no way provide for them. Is this accurate? Varama. No. Arano. No? Did you miswrite the statement? Virama. I can do it. I did do it. And my accuser knows it. He can only have been a wise speaker himself disguised. I defeated him in the holy game in each of the four quarters, and he only reported me after he was not pleased with my reading. Orano. Are you aware that you've confessed to a capital crime? None but the wise speakers may engage in omen reading. Virama. Dragons take him. I beat him and he knows it. Here is a commotion among the witnesses, among whom is the accuser, wise speaker, Ronoro Mimitu. Says Ronoro, you cheated boy. There can be no other explanation. Dorama, perhaps I simply know some rules you never learned. Ronoro, every word you utter condemns you more, fool. Orano, the wise speaker speaks the truth. His accusation, if proven, would have left you alive, but your confession condemns you to death. Dorama, so be it. It was the prophet. It had to be. But no one would ever be able to read this tablet if I published this translation. The Alkirk would surely suppress it as heresy and blasphemy, if only because they would never admit the prophet uh, would utter so vulgar a curse as dragon's take. I still remember my mother's face pinching in anger when I used such language as a girl. But according to this text, Verum son of Vongano both had the power of divination and was a common trinket seller. Excuse me. How could he be condemned to death here and survive to become the prophet? For that matter, how could he have written the Moro book at all, considering the book prophesied the Calendarum Cataclysm long before it occurred? How much did the Alkirk have wrong about him? Yeah. I'd come to the bottom of the tablet. The reverse side promised the rest of the story. I was eager to press on, fairly shaking with forbidden knowledge, and scared and a little depressed. I was the only person outside the Alkirk who would ever read this. If I was careful, Jans might yet win some fame and fortune for the age and integrity of the find. But if there were other tablets as dangerous as this one, it would just bring him exile and injunction at best. I stood and stretched. When absorbed in the work of writing or transcribing, or especially translating, my posture hunches into that of a miserable beggar. I squeezed my eyes shut to let glowing after images of dancing chisel marks fade to darkness and fanned my cramping pen hand until my knuckles crackled. There was a reason people used scriveners. But I couldn't stretch away the tension the tail itself lodged in me. A chilly breeze elbowed its way past the heavy drapery and I went to the window to close it, forgetting already that it had shattered in the quake. Had that been today? The sun was down, erasing any sense of time. I draped the tablet swaddling blanket around my shoulders and wondered if there was any news on the storm chart. I went downstairs. The other guests had scattered to their rooms or to better stocked bars, but Jans was there, gazing at the storm chart, rubbing the day's growth of bristle on his cheeks. The bottle of soju sat nearby, and he made, he'd made good use of it. A creak on the stairs gave me away. He looked up, and the knot in his jaw loosened. His tired smile took me back to our pleasant quest days together. There's reports of wave walls hitting the main fire islands caused by the quake, he said. Oh, I said. Big waves often did that, but the wave breaks at home usually broke them up pretty well. Bad? No one's hurt that I can see, apart from the usual idiot rush seekers. Any sign we'll be getting one? He focused the brass oracle back on Aoden. None, said Jans, and rubbed at his cheek again. It did seem odd that we'd be spared, but there was no reason not to trust the feat's report, or so I thought. Cataloging all, cataloging all done, I asked, nudging his leg aside to sit down beside him. I probably fixed it up so bad I'll have to do it again from go tomorrow, but Doral Osanker seems satisfied. Doral was the Alkirk purser whose funding was on the line. You far called her? Yep. He slugged back the last of his soju and sucked air through his teeth as it hit home. She sounded pretty excited. A hollow yawned in my gut. If I stop translating now, just switch to packing tablets and artifacts for shipment back to Stoke. Jans would get his fortune, Dora Los Anker would get her investment back tenfold, at least until someone else deep inside the Alkirk pulled out the tablet and started translating again. They'd wonder why I stopped so suddenly. Could I keep it secret? Maybe they'd take me in. Let me translate to my heart's content as long as no one outside ever got to see the results. 
Would that be so terrible? More prestige for the Demoster name, and at least I'd know how the story ended. How's the translation going, John Jans asked. Oh, uh, about half done with the first tablet. And, are, are you ready to share anything on there that can date it at least? He pulled himself to the edge of his seat, so hungry, so patient. Uh, my heart leapt out to him. It was written on the 22nd of Neotau, the second day of the sword tide, six years after the Tano Tano Ark landed. His eyes fed on my face, looking for the date significance. Specific, he finally said. You know the deluge myth of Utapash and the Ark? I think the Tano Tano Ark refers to one of several ships, and have as many as a hundred that actually existed and preserved survivors of the Kalindarum Cataclysm. No one knows how long they coasted on the open sea after the Hammerfall, how they could have survived it at all. Tano Tano is what the na natives called the Fire Island Lame when our ancestors arrived from the mainland over 3,000 years ago. There, that was more than enough to keep Jan's goggle mouth for the night. He'd never need to know more than that. But dragons take it. I had to know.